Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the BASAC virtual webinar of the 2025 initiative. Today is the first day of the seven days of preparation and we gather together to prepare in one alignment as one group standing on behalf of humanity. Today's webinar will follow a um, different order than usual. We will um, keep the meditative alignment throughout all the presentations and all the sharings with the intention to create a five-pointed star alignment connecting five different continents. Before we begin this ritual, I want to, if anyone uh, didn't hear the story of the Vesak, I just want to briefly share with you uh, about the significance of this festival. Vesak festival is the pinnacle of the spiritual year. The recurring act of the spiritual approach and blessing that brings three planetary centers, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity into a great alignment. Every year during this festival, two great spiritual beings on our planet, two brothers, Buddha and Christ, meet, bringing the spiritual and manifested world together confirming the great promise of the divine plan on earth. According to the Vesak legend, there is an actual ceremony happening in a valley in Tibet with the Christ standing on a rock and the Buddha approaching from the sky, bringing the blessings of Shambhala to the entire planet. The spiritual hierarchy and disciples of the world participate in this ceremony, consciously aligning with the Christ, receiving the impulse coming from the Buddha. During this time, the group of world servers aligns with the Christ on the behalf of humanity. The story tells us that in preparation for the approach of Buddha, certain ritualistic movements happening among those participating in the ceremony. Together, they form various geometric patterns, including a five-pointed star, a cross, and a triangle. There is a crystal bowl filled with water stands in front of the Christ. This water focuses the blessing of the Buddha. When the ceremony is over, this water is distributed among the participants. This ceremony happens during the exact moment of the full moon when sun is in the sign of Taurus, also known as the May full moon. It is suggested to observe a seven days period for the Vesak alignment with three days before the day of the full moon, the days of preparation, and three days after, days of distribution. Today is the first day of the seven days period with this webinar, we start preparing to the great Vesak approach, aligning together and with all other world servers around the globe with intention to bring humanity into unity. Today's Vesak planetary alignment ritual is an unfoldment of the ritual the 2025 initiative organized the previous years. It is an experiment of building a dynamic alignment between five continents through sharing of stories of living discipleship. 
We will use the power of creative imagination to build an alignment between five continents, forming a five-pointed star in etheric matter, connecting humanity in one receptive unit for the coming Vesak blessing. We will start our sharing from the planetary center of New York, integrating both South and North Americas, moving then to Africa, then to Asia, from Asia to Europe, from Europe to Australia, and back to America, thus completing the star shape bringing the entire humanity in the unity. As we will listen to the sharing of our panelists, we invite you to send the note of all those continents. And we also invite you to connect with people you know and love on those continents. Thus, we will enhance the theory connectivity with the living energy of love. Through this ritual, we will form a unified group chalice filled with water of life to receive the Vesak blessing coming from Buddha during the exact time of the full moon and to be distributed throughout the entire humanity. In preparation for today's webinar, we suggested uh, the following question for the group reflection. How can we as world service assist each other with grounding the real in increasingly practical and effective ways so that together we make the shift to a more proactive and living expression of love and goodwill in the world? This question is uh, derived from the 2025 Initiatives Year Focus that was developed from the collective reflection and sharing uh, among the, all the former webinar speakers and the coordination group. The basic impulse energy stays with the Christ till the next solar festival in Gemini, known as the Festival of Humanity which happens during the full moon when sun is in Gemini, exactly in a month from now. Then the basic impulse of energy is transmitted further by the Christ through the spiritual hierarchy of the planet and disciples of the world to the entire humanity. During the full moon of Gemini, we invite you to join us for an online conference radiating the living light of the soul, grounding the real, which will happen on May 26. Then we will continue this work aligning with the Christ and the hierarchy. And we will work focusing on distribution, the impulse that will be received by Christ from the Buddha this full moon, distributing it further to humanity. So, we can proceed now with our ritual alignment work. So, uh, Katya, please begin the alignment. Uh, hi, um, I'm Katja Kaufman. Uh, I'm in Moscow now, which is uh, ruled by the energies of Taurus. So from that place, filled with those energies, we begin our alignment.
we sit, get united with the energies of light and love and power. As we sound OM, we align our low bodies, physical, etheric, astral, and mental. We align with the energies of the soul and sound on. We visualize the beam of light in the center of the group. And we project our aligned individual centers onto that beam of light. And we see those seven lotuses floating and radiating. Those are our group centers. We project that alignment further and align with the centers of the new group of world service. And furthermore, aligning with the planetary centers. Visualize the protective triangle of energies of Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. Visualize the energies of Vesak. pouring it through a triangle of great spiritual beings that we call the Lord of the World, Sanat Kumara, Buddha, and Christ. We see those energies transmitting from the great beings that we call Venus and Vulcan. We see group head center, heart center, and throat center. Triangles working.
we direct our focus attention to precipitate the energy of the law of compassion. The truth of right relationship, loving understanding, actively expressed love. the foundation of brotherhood and the expression of inner unity. And we sound the mantra of unification. The sons of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve, not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form in life and all events and bring to light the love that underlines the happening of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages begun. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Ooh. We focus our attention in the heart center of the group and begin our work. Manuel. Hello. Hello. Please. May I start? Yes. Greetings to everybody. Speaking from New York City. New York. Whose keynote? is I light the way. Once again, welcome to everyone 
as we approach the sacred spiritual high point in the year. Our reflections today, our reflection today is focused for us through the following question. How can we as world servers assist each other with grounding the real in increasingly practical and effective ways so that together we make a shift to a more proactive and living expression of love and goodwill in the world. I would like to simply address this directly. One of the ways we can do this is through a tested process that we all know and use, but which in this sharing we just want to re-emphasize its potency anew. This process is the art of visualization. Here and now, we can begin to visualize each other according to a part of the affirmation of the disciple. That is, we visualize one another as a point of light within a greater light, as a strand of loving energy within the stream of love divine, and as a point of sacrificial fire focused within the fiery will of God we immediately begin to relinquish seeing each other as personalities with all our many faults and instead bring in the qualities of the soul immediately. When we visualize each other in this way, we evoke and externalize the soul's energies, that is the energy of the united group, and we bring the creatively imagined spiritual potencies into the activity of the etheric substance or the etheric plane. And from that plane, from that etheric plane, the energies that you have invoked and the forces emerge as living expressions of light, of love, and of goodwill. Livingness is of the nature of divinity. And livingness gives vitality to all manifestations. Livingness emanates from the higher etheric realms so through visualization, we not only evoke and we not only externalize potencies, but we bridge between the higher etheric realms and the lower etheric planes. And along this creatively imagined and actively existent bridge, the energy of livingness will successfully flow according to the degree of the unity and of the unity of our efforts. Therefore, it is in unison that we can truly invoke inequalities into a living expression. The unity we are talking about is the unity in consciousness of the one work 
of the one life, of the one love, of the one soul. And when we strive towards oneness of work, then livingness will characterize all that we do. And we shall be able to direct, according to the plan, energies from Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known, through the hierarchy, the center where the love of God prevails, into humanity, where the creative intelligence is producing the evolutionary process. And when we do so, we assist each other in all service on the planet. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel, for that excellent start. And my brother Emmanuel touched on a very important matter of unity. And in South Africa, as many of our dear listeners are aware, is in the, in the philosophy of Ubuntu, which means I am because we are, has been a cornerstone of both South Africa as well as Southern African philosophy and ethics in the past few decades. And so that's very beautiful to see how this philosophy, despite having different names, exists all through all throughout the world. The task at hand is tremendous. At no other time in history have we had the tools at our disposal to realize our ideals onto the world. With such ease comes responsibility to perform and to ground the real. In the brief presentation at hand, I'm going to narrate from you from two different cultures, from the African continent onto the Asian continent. And let let us first take a moment to review the lived experiences on the matter of conflict and how the San Bushmen of this region of the world handled that issue. In, it's a very beautiful way, of course. When, whenever there is a problem, that problem is sang in a community setting in the evening. Individuals sing their issues 
and the community gets a chance to reflect. And the very next evening, there's a song in response with ideas and ways to handle issues in the community. Other ways that my fellow countrymen in this part of the world handle it is to start with healing emotional wounds, to be able to express grievances. And if there is a scenario where parties are not able to handle their grievances together, the elders will convene a mutla, which is a public meeting to discuss issues. And that sense of being heard often exhausts the conflict already. Sometimes tension is relieved through a trance dance where the members of the community, as well as people who are in conflict, start dancing together and enter a trance. And according to the traditions, receive divine advice and the conflict is settled. These and other matters are what exist on the ground. And in order for us to, one method of uh, grounding the real is to be able to resolve issues which we might have amongst ourselves or to act as intermediates for other people who may be having conflict. And conflict management, as I will see towards the end of this conversation with you, is a way to open up the heart and open up the hearts of others, to bring light to the heart. And as we journey on from the African continent towards Asia, and my, and my personal background is from West Asia. I want to touch on what we call Sufism, which is more correctly, accurately titled Tasawwuf. Tasawwuf is the Arabic word that's used in the region for Sufism, and it means the process of becoming. Great Sufi teachers always emphasize that the teachings are not by nature transmitted through words, but through becoming. And that becoming happens in the heart. However, a great deal of the teaching of Tasawwuf emphasizes the development of the heart as a mechanism towards becoming hollow in order to become an instrument in the universal orchestra. This approach towards grinding the real requires placement of the heart at the core of each activity and the removal of activities that do not place the heart at the core. In West Asian tradition, this begins with a family unit and moves towards the community, acknowledging the criticality of a strong community bond in carrying out the divine work harmoniously and cooperatively. And it's also interesting, as my brother Emmanuel was talking about unity, Ubuntu is very much about having a strong sense of community as well. Concurrently, there's also a sense of duty that is imparted towards excellence in, the, in practical fields, towards becoming role models at the highest extent possible. Such outward success, when combined with deep humbleness and humility, draws in and further amplifies the transformative work that needs to take place. Thank you.
Hello. My name is Uta and I represent tonight Asia and Europe. I was born in Germany, but I lived for 35 years in Jerusalem, where we are running together with my colleagues the Hechal Center for Universal Spirituality. Although currently I live back in Germany and I am also engaged in founding another still very young little light center. Our Hechal group holds a weekly online meditation, which we call the Jerusalem Meditation. And it has the purpose of using, focalizing, building the synthetic quality of the will to love. The will to love. We apply it rhythmically to Jerusalem each week. Uh, actually much like a medicine and uh, with a hopeful effect to help raise separation consciousness to unity consciousness. Hechal consists of people from Jerusalem and from abroad. And this fact helps to create a circulatory flow of light and love <coughs> and goodwill from and into Jerusalem, weaving higher vibrational relations between this symbol of the hope of peace and the rest of the world. Together with the, with the online work, we are also meeting twice a year physically once in Jerusalem and once in Europe. And it is actually a lot through these physical meetings um, that we feel a grounding. It gives us a sense of spiritual friendship, of real heart connections. And um, yeah, and in this sense, making the work real. So these heart connections, these bonds of love, human love, uh, have for me a lot to do with making things real. Um, this is also what we are basing our work in, now in our new outpost in Germany. The commitment to the will to love. It's not always easy to be a group, um, but we can cultivate this will to love. Um, another little side note is uh, um, we are mainly speaking Hebrew here among ourselves in Germany uh, because we are mainly Hebrew speakers. And this is uh, contributing something to the amalgamation taking place now between Asia and Europe through the immigrant crisis. For me, grounding the real means living the life of the soul through the human heart in our everyday life and relationships. And this means that actually our experience of ourselves as the soul, as, as soul, is the bedrock. The more real we can make this experience, the more we will express it throughout our lives in all endeavors. That sounds obvious, but it actually requires quite a courage for many of us. It means to make our own experience, subjective experience, very central. In fact, it actually means, in my experience in any way, to give it first priority, even over our trusted teachings of all that we know, theoretically. 
It means to give precedence to love and to the simple human heart, to dare to use it as our compass in this chaotic transitional time on our planet. And uh, we are asking here also, how can we as world servers assist each other in grounding the real? And for me, it's very clear that this is by forming groups. What the family unit is for society is the spiritual or goodwill group for the new group of world servers. There's such a great difference between working alone on the spiritual path, serving, and being a member of a spiritual group. It's a real life changer. Group life not only accelerates personal growth, but it also gives us protection and stability and direction in this transitional time now where all this chaos is happening. And of course, once we learn to work as a group, our service has a much greater impact. So in my opinion, this is the best we can do in this moment to co-create and to help others create well-functioning spiritual groups which contribute some specific service. Such groups are potent fields, are chalices, through which the higher forces can work on behalf of our world in transition. So as we listen now to the following OM, we may hold the image of many such chalices all around our planet interconnected, sounding the note of the new civilization. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Philip Lindsay in the south of Sweden. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Well, how can I put this without sounding platitudes that we will all repeat, but do not necessarily take action upon? This phrase of how can we as world servers assist each other with grounding the real? The following list of 10 points come to mind and they are by no means exhaustive or in any particular order of importance. Point one, healing divisions within the esoteric community. This is based upon various schisms of interpretation of the teachings, various ray approaches, cultural and media conditioning and political opinions. The divisions can be quite blatant and obvious, leading us to reject an individual or a group. 
whilst others are more subtle in terms of the little cliques or cleavages that exist. Hence, the development of impersonality is one prerequisite for, for group work. How to work with personality differences is one of the biggest problems, but is attainable. How to work with one another within a group, let alone working with other groups. Point two, meditation. Who among us can say that we can truly meditate? Do we meditate every day in order to strengthen the link to the soul and the world group? Do we practice the various techniques of true occult meditation in DK's books, or do we do a vague, mystical, aspiring kind of meditation? We live in an era where glamour is more pronounced than usual due to Neptune's transit through Pisces and its lower expression. And this is the so-called post-truth age where emotional appeal wins out over logic or rationale. Hence the greater need to focus away from so many distractions. How many of us have applied the glamour meditations given in DK's book of the same name on the dissipation of glamour within ourselves, within groups, within our nations, within the planet? Currently, I'm based in Sweden, and I've noted recently that all members of the United Nations, this is point three, by the way, that all members of the United Nations Security Council came here for a retreat together in Dag Hammarskjöld's old country home in the south of Sweden. Scandinavia's sole purpose is Libra, the peacemaker. And it is from these nations that the Nobel Peace Prize has emerged. So this is encouraging, given the recent hostilities within that council. Europe is, of course, in turmoil, with Britain retreating from the EU and other nations contemplating the same. There are almost insurmountable debts of major nations, which run collectively into the trillions. The plight of refugees and human rights issues continue. And there is a steadily ongoing emergence of fascism in its more obvious aspects, but also in less obvious ways, the so-called creeping fascism. All Western nations are going through a dark night of the soul collectively, and this is part of the reason for so much chaos and uncertainty right now. Added to this is the incidental chaos as we transition from Pisces to Aquarius, from the sixth to the seventh race cycles, and from the fifth race to the sixth root race. <clears throat> I've been asked to link from Europe to Australia, the country I grew up in, but no longer live in. Australia is going through its own shadow cycle currently and being forced to confront its demons. Nationalism, greed and domination by business interests are some of the challenges it faces, like most other Western nations. Australia is part of the British Commonwealth, which though almost dissolved externally, still has a potent subjective power. In this respect, Sydney was assigned the solar plexus centre of the British Commonwealth by DK and Australia is made up of many Europeans, hence the link back to Europe. Geneva in Europe is the heart centre of the fifth root race, and we know that there is a relation between the solar plexus forces that are raised to the heart. London is the throat centre, the mind of the fifth root race, but also the heart within the head of the British Commonwealth, hence the relation back to Sydney and Australia. We have our groups in Australia like Sydney Goodwill and others that we all link up with regularly at the full moon festivals. <clears throat> Point four, we must fight the powers of disinformation and propaganda. This was covered by Alexander in last month's 2025 initiative for Aries. We strive to tread the line of being informed more accurately rather than being fed a diet of MSM news but also striving to focus upon building the new emerging Aquarian paradigm. Point five, on the eve of the cycle of the fourth ray of harmony through conflict in 2025, just seven years away, we must emphasize the unifying principles of the universal languages of music, beauty and art. Those languages transcend all our little differences and inspire us to create a world of greater beauty that will override the cultural ugliness and environmental degradation that we have created. Point six, humor. 
to keep one another's spirits up through the play of humour in our lives. Point seven, understanding the continual affirming power of love in the world and its relation to courage. Love equals courage and courage equals love, the capacity to live our lives and choose courage under daunting external conditions. Point eight, to listen to the aspirations, dreams and impressions of our group brothers and sisters. A friend of mine in Europe wrote me about a powerful dream recently that he was impressed by on the subject of Orion. This led me to investigate some passages where DK discusses Betelgeuse, one of the stars in Orion. And this passage from Esoteric Psychology 1 is probably most relevant to all of us. Quoting, Influential, I'm quoting DK here, influential and potent forces pouring in at this time from the great stars Betelgeuse and Sirius. To these two influences, the disciples of the world in the senior ranks of the new group of world servers definitely react, and they produce a stimulation of the heart center, Betelgeuse, and the head center, Sirius. The secondary effect of these energies is upon the mineral kingdom, particularly upon that peculiar product, gold, and that enigma, money, unquote. Point nine, to create initiatives of potent subjective power. Perhaps we could bring back the silent minute as recently suggested by a co-worker, like the midday recollection, though at some other universally agreed time. Uh, I don't have time to explain all of that, but essentially that was sounded at... Uh, or that was carried out at 9 p.m. every night during the war or during the blitz years in, in Britain um, when Big Ben told at 9 o'clock the silent minute. And point 10, to use the original great invocation at this time of planetary crisis, as we will do later on in the meditation. Thank you. Hi everyone, Scott Maver, connecting from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. How can we as world servers assist each other with grounding the real in increasingly practical and effective ways so that together we make the shift to a more proactive and living expression of love and goodwill in the world? Reflecting on our keynote question, it occurred to me that there is a primary focus for all of us, our point of identification. Further, as the recent Sydney Goodwill newsletter brought home for us, love is the lion of truth. In Discipleship in the New Age too, we read, few dare trust themselves to see their fellow men as they really are. For fear of a critical spirit, so hard it is to develop the true practice of loving understanding, which leads to the seeing of all people in truth, with their faults 
and their virtues, their pettiness and their grandeurs, and still to love them as before and even more. Judy Norman with Sydney Goodwill shares, as love is registering in the human heart, a great conflagration is moving through the world. Its increasing light towers over the pettiness of small transient prisons and releases human destiny towards fulfillment. This mighty fire destroys, destroys all that is not of itself. It is spirit manifesting and burning away separative illusions which dissolve in its piercing brightness. The more we love, the more we see that we are made of the same fire. God is love, we have been told. Now we are realizing we are love. And as we hold a shared point of tension at this high point of the spiritual year, we five panelists represent all of us, hearts united across distance in a field conditioned by love. For only as we live and move and have our being through unconditional love do we approach our potential as a group, realizing the revelation of our time, oneness, serving together and as a group at all times, regardless of where we are stationed, our points of entry, inner, outer, or how the work manifests visibly and invisibly throughout the world. So how to assist one another with grounding the real in increasingly practical and effective ways, spiritualizing matter. Over the last three decades, I've had the joy of cooperating with Sydney Goodwill in Sydney, Australia. Opportunities to work from the Americas to Australia and back again, as though there is no distance separating us at all, which in fact is the truth. Since 1989, we have supported one another subjectively and have been together at conferences on both continents, often sharing in preparation and facilitation. In 2003, we hosted a Share the Spirit of Peace Summit in Sydney, which led to Share the Spirit of Peace Summits in New York, London, Darjeeling, Tokyo, South Africa, and in 2013, we completed the circuit of planetary centers with a summit in Geneva. It never mattered whose idea or who got credit. Most recently, in relation to the peacebuilding work and following the success of the River Phoenix Center for Peacebuilding in Gainesville, Florida, which is now invited to participate in the U.S. State Department efforts to promote peacebuilding and find solutions, to conflict and violence. We spent time on the Sunshine Coast in Australia with a group seeking to develop a peace belt building center in Mullaney. And that is now a reality. Once again, grounding the real through pragmatic initiatives aligned with spiritual principles and actualizing the spirit matter continuum as we intentionally bridge the fourth and fifth kingdoms while proactively creating the conditions for a culture of peace. Peace symbolized by the chalice. There is so much more that could be added regarding what happens out here. Books get written in cooperation, events are planned and presented, podiums are shared, meditations activate the field, and our cooperation, research, and experimentation is ongoing. Having said that, there is one thing that is vital for all of us, and that is identical at oneness. Perhaps the Christ and Master Jesus offer the most grounded, real experience of identical at oneness as we reflect on the journey of Jesus some 2,000 years ago. When we experience identical at oneness with at least one other person, we bring to bear the weight of unwavering conscious truth to the fact that there is no separation. And when we live from a point of oneness in a field of love, the lion of truth, we cannot help but being a more proactive and living expression of love and goodwill in the world. In fact, we vibrate to that frequency 
and our very radiatory presence in the world is that living expression. In the book Heart, Sloka 339, we read, Surya Vidya. Thus was the teaching of the heart sometimes called. In this definition was indicated the fieriness, the sun-like quality, the centrality of the heart. Verily, anyone who wishes to cognize the heart cannot approach it as only a part of the organism. First of all, one should recognize the centrifugal aspect of the heart and study outward from it, not inward toward it. The heart stands as the temple of humanity. One cannot conceive of the unity of humanity by way of the brain or kundalini, but the radiance of the heart can bring together the most seemingly varied organisms, even across remote distances. This experiment of the unification of hearts across distance awaits its workers. The wish to inaugurate experiments of lengthy duration is quite correct. Let us today in the flow of WESAC commit to love more, to love life and one another, to recognize our oneness, commit to loving understanding regardless of circumstance, and offer ourselves together and as a group, continent to continent around the world, as a vehicle of right relationship, of harmony through conflict, of love and goodwill in preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. Om Shanti. meditation. This following meditation has used Alice Bailey's description of her subjective visit to the Wiesak Valley as an inspiration for our visualization and our approach to this Wiesak festival in the next few days. So let us settle ourselves now, quietening our environment from any distracting sounds. Taking a few deep breaths, letting go of any mind chatter. And moving into that deep center of calm and quiet within the heart. The place of peace. And from that place, we affirm our connection to one another as souls by sounding the Om silently three times, each time imagining waves of light pouring through our united hearts and minds. 
expanding and rippling around the planet, lighting it up with our fiery hearts. Let us take the time to do this for a minute or so, to effect a potent group alignment in preparation for our other work. Let us now turn our attention to the Wiesak Valley, high up on the Tibetan Plateau, in the vicinity of Mount Kailash, the abode of Shiva. We are standing on the ridge of the valley, looking down upon the pilgrims gathering from all around the world in their physical bodies and or more subtle forms. There is an air of expectancy as we walk down the valley to take our place in this great throng of co-workers from all around the planet. We are now in this enormous crowd facing the east with a hushed expectation and a hearty aspiration. We are all looking towards a narrow bottleneck passage at the end of the valley. And just before this funnel shaped passage stands an immense rock rising out of the floor of the valley like a great table. And on top of the rock stands a very large crystal bowl full of water. Almost imperceptibly comes into our vision three figures who form a triangle on that rock, the Manu and Mahakon, with the Christ at the apex of the triangle. Dynamic light waves are pulsing all around them. Standing in front of the platform of that triangle are the Masters of Wisdom facing out towards the assembled crowd, radiating their mighty combined power to the great assembly of which we are part. And we find ourselves in the crowd, engaged in a solemn rhythmic dance, very slow and dignified, but in complete silence and bliss spontaneously forming great symbols like the cross and the five-pointed star. Then suddenly the three figures before the rock stretch out their arms towards the heavens. The crowd ceases its movement. At the far end of the bottleneck, a figure can be discerned in the sky, hovering over the passage and slowly approaching the rock. We recognize the Buddha, the great teacher of humanity, reconnecting with this planet on his annual visit. He 
he hovers over the crystal bowl that is full of pulsating and luminescent colours, greeting his brothers with a Wisak mudra. And as we witness this, we realize the profound unity of all manifestation, the one divine and living whole. The Buddha then delivers Hierarchy's yearly plan. Let us pause and reflect for some minutes and receive impressions as to what that plan might be in our practical role as world servers. As the Buddha radiates his extraordinary aura over the valley, we become aware of an even greater aura standing behind the Buddha and the Christ, that of Sanakamara, the Lord of the world or Ancient of Days. The combined force of their higher triangle now radiates through the lesser triangle to the masters of wisdom and their assembled aspirants, disciples and initiates of all the planetary ashrams. It pulses through us all on its way to humanity. This part of the annually amended planetary plan we transmit through our hearts as we visualize these waves of light rippling around the etheric body of the planet. And as we proceed with this work, we recognize that we are creating an invocation for the avatar of synthesis, whose approach to earth is accelerating in order to further the manifestation of unity, oneness and interrelation. To wield and apply energy of the first ray of will or power and this avatar will galvanize our new group of world servers with dynamic energy so that a new synthesis and alignment will be present upon the earth. We sense this approach of the rider who comes forth from the secret place and know that nothing can stop his coming. In recognition and affirmation of this, we sound the original great invocation, followed by the great invocation with which we are more familiar. And we will finish by sounding the Om three times after the second invocation. So let us sound these invocations deliberately and rhythmically, pausing between stanzas, using our powers of visualization. 
to energize these mantras and their effects around the planet. Let the forces of light bring illumination to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Let the Lord of Liberation issue forth. Let him bring succor to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming save. Come forth, O mighty one. Let the souls of men awaken to the light and may they stand with massed intent. Let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. Second Great Invocation From the point of light within the mind of God Let light stream forth into the minds of men Let light descend on earth From the point of love within the heart of God let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where ill dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. I am reluctant to interrupt the quiet. Thank you to our speakers for their contributions today and to all of you for attending. 
we invite you to stay in the potent energies invoked today and to consider this festival and this gathering as a portal into the final seven year cycle when in 2025 the masters will meet with the christ to review humanity's progress over the last 100 years this period will be a time of increasing potency and responsibility to quote philip um, from his taurus 2014 newsletter the hierarchy invests a lot of hope in the new group of world servers this intermediate planetary center is in many respects the hope of humanity dk tells us that the path to liberation is service the goal is not one of self-illumination it is rather the goal of providing a center of light within the world of men and of holding up the vision to the sons of men so we continue to focus on ways in which we can radiate the living light of the soul grounding the real through our daily contacts and connections and in our service work we affirm the intentions of the 2025 initiative to create a safe and vitalized space for the exchange of inspiration and ideas and in support of our wider group effort we invoke the presence and the assistance of hierarchy and the christ and of all those beings in the subtle realms whose purpose is the increase of light and love in the world and the fostering of clarity and coherence within the group soul ubuntu i am because we are we will close today's meeting by saying together the affirmation of love in the center of all love i stand from that center i the soul will outward move from that center I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, in my group, and throughout the world. Thank you. We will meet again at the time of the Waysack full moon. Blessings, everyone. Thank you.